was absolutely fine. There we go. <laughs> but no, seriously, I had an installation problem that that, that that actually placed a little bit, it all looked okay. So what it's trying to do now is um, it's asking us to, to load up the Exchange console to complete the um, configuration. So I'm going to say finish to that and see what happens. But you, you already clicked on it? I clicked on it, yeah. So it should pop up in a second. So the only thing really you need to do, it's fully functional, um, but one thing it won't have is it won't have access to the internet. It doesn't have a send connector to people out on the internet. So we can go through this, finalise deployment tasks. I haven't seen any of these before. Probably setting up things like email addresses. Come on. See, this is what people say they liked about it, is things don't go right all the time. And you have pauses in. And but this pause is perhaps a little bit too long. Did you even click on it? I, I did click on it, but click. Oh, something popped up then. Right. Oh, it's going to go to the internet and tell me to do stuff. So, which is all very well and all nice, but let's just have a look at the console, shall we? Okay. The true one. So, organisation. That's another thing. Um, from Exchange 2007, it hasn't changed a great deal. From Exchange uh, 2003 below, the console's changed so much. And uh, notice this is our on-premises exchange, mm -hmm. not our cloud-based exchange. And um, yeah, that's, that's something I was hoping not to see. So we've installed Exchange. We um, about to have a look at it in just a second. It's going to be exciting, uh, and then we'll create super user account, and later on we look at maybe upgrading from Exchange 2003. And uh, yeah, let's just have a look at um, Hyper V. So just slightly ping into my Exchange server here, so we can see the console for the first time. What do you reckon? Exciting stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, move mouse, please. So lots of changes to the console, as you can see. If you're looking at it, you can see we've got it's been I'm to. I'm talking. Oh, carry on. It's been to organisation configuration. We've got server configuration and recipient configuration. And uh, underneath organisation configuration, you've got things that would affect the entire organisation. And underneath server configuration, it's all marrying up now. We might see something else, but no, no, I'm going to go somewhere else. Let's look at mailbox. So we can see we've got a few mailboxes here administrator, Bob Scott, Nicky Curtis. Let's just create a new mailbox for Supe. There's a few differences here. Um, one thing you can't do, you can't create a user account and the mailbox in Active Directory solely, but you can create a mailbox in this console and attach it to an existing user, or you can create a mailbox here and create the, mail the user at the same time. So we've got various different types of mailboxes. We've got a user mailbox, which is the standard mailbox that has mail. We've got a room mailbox, which could be, for example, a meeting room that you want to invite to a meeting. An equipment mailbox um, could be a projector. Said something? No. Um, <laughs> and a link mailbox is a mailbox for someone whose Active Directory account lives in this another. So, um, what's this linked mailbox then? Oh, okay, that, the link mailbox is for an account, uh, a mailbox for someone whose account lives in a different forest, so a trusted forest. So um, the example I remember talking about this at the time, this is probably what I'm talking about now, oh, I'll take a guess, um, was a company, this is not going too well. Uh, let's, let's see where, where we go next. Oh. Uh, did you watch EastEnders last night? Um, no. no. Is it on Friday? I don't know. Should we get back to exchange? I don't know. I wish no. we'd move on from this screen. No, I'm obviously talking about something exciting. I think you're here. talking about linked mailbox. I think I'm talking about linked mailbox. And I think the scenario I'm talking about here was we had an organization, they're running, let's say, MT4, and um, they want to run exchange 2010 or 2007. However, their domain is not at the right level to host exchange, or maybe they're running Novell. I see. So we can create them a, a forest, we can create exchange in, their forest, in that forest, we can create them link mailboxes in their forest and link back 
to that standard user account. Okay. Okay. Your lips are moving, but nothing's coming out. Well, I'm trying. Okay. Well, let's get I've on with creating today. your user account. So it's for a new user. So this is your first user account in the IT that's the main. Exciting stuff. So am I going to be able to get external mail then? Um, well, not to start with, but we can look at setting that up, certainly. We can deal with MX records and such like. And waffle. Okay. okay. Sounds good to me. It does sound ha -ha. good. Right. So presumably at some point I'm going to select an organization unit for you to go into. But I think at this point what I'm doing is I'm restressing the point that you need this tool to create both a user and a mailbox. You can't do this in Active Directory using computers in its own right. But saying that, as you can see from this tool, when we do create a mailbox and a user account together, we can choose the organization unit that user account will live in. So I haven't got a decent structure at the moment, so I'll just stick you in the users one. Let's see what goes on. And we're tapping first name, last name. Uh, do you know how to spell my first name? Yes, okay. I do. I've That's got right. a few letters. Yeah. A few letters. Yeah. Two vowels. And a dash. What's that? You can't actually have a dash. That dash can't form your name. Of course it does. You can't have the called C dash Faye, though. A dash separates the name. Well, that gives you the option to call me Sue or Faye. Yeah, but you don't like any of those, do you? No, not really. Well, there you go, then. That's the point. Right, um, so your password. Let's go next. What's on the next screen? So your mailbox alias. So this is just an alias name which someone can tap into Outlook very quickly without interacting with the gal or replying to a message, etc. So I always like to keep that the same as the mailbox name or the same as the user account name and see so you know that as well as I do, helps you with your scripting and such like. Okay. But they can be different, yeah? They can be different, yeah. If you, if you want a hard life, I recommend that. So there's your new mailbox. It's all exciting stuff. All right. Um, so shall we explain what went wrong before? What, with the video editing? Oh, no, the, the fact that we're coming back for the third time on this episode. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the reason why this episode is a little bit massive. If you look closely, you might notice the lips aren't synced. Um, yeah, we've had a few disastrous um, problems with microphones and uh, the installation of exchange. Yeah. But I think I might be looking at something a bit more exciting now, so let's just go back to looking okay. at screenshots. So what I'm showing here is under organization configuration, one of the big changes is the mailboxes are created as a property of the organization rather than the property of the mailbox, which I'm showing you, property of the server, which I'm showing you now. In this way, it just means that you can create a mailbox for the organization and that mail, sorry, a mail store for the organization and that mail store can be hosted on multiple servers. So what you can see here is we've got a mailbox database and apparently at the bottom you can see what service that's hosted on but you can host it on multiple servers such like <clears throat> right. waffle Bill. and um, database accessibility group this is something we definitely do as well this um, is the new way of providing what Exchange 2007 used to call LCR, Local Computer Replication. Haha, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all, the, all the CR stuff, they're, they're all DAGs now. So client access, what would you expect to see under client access? Um, OWA? Yep. So we've got OWA stuff under that, so it's how a client accesses their mailbox, so we can see things like um, Outlook Web Access, um, also this is showing you what areas of Outlook Web Access, for example, I could say I don't want you seeing the contacts section, I don't want you accessing the journal section, so we could do that. On that screen, that also gives us the ability for those mail users to access uh, file shares. Mm. And uh, where are we going next? And uh, we're looking at the properties of active sync mailboxes. So, yeah, this is used for smartphones and uh, iPhones as well, which both Supe and I have. And more people are having now. Yeah, know, which, just, which I have, uh, well, you have right in front right, of your laptop, right, right you look closely. Screen, yeah. Yeah. So you can see on this screen, we can do things that we can bar the device. We can say, you're not using the camera, you're not using the Wi Fi, you can do it. I'm not able Allow to... Wi Fi? That's interesting. Yeah, so again, it's really protecting that smartphone, making sure they can't bring them anything nasty or maybe share stuff from that smartphone. Well, I can understand that you know, they would require a password. But yeah, that's certainly something we've enforced on our iPhones when we yeah. attach it. That does get affected, so I need to have a, a full capture passcode in order to pick up my email. Yeah. But some of these other settings, have a look in the documentation, because not all of these work on iPhones, but you might be using a device other than an iPhone. Right. If like, there's yeah. any left. <laughs> Do they exist still? 